Being asked to give the valedictory address is the highest honor the faculty of Chandler Preparatory Academy bestows upon the students of our school. While the first tri criterion is an academic one, the faculty goes on to discuss how the character and community involvement of the student has played out. And in a class with an amazing breadth and depth of accomplishments, Madison Quick stands out as an exceptional young woman. Along with maintaining a perfect GPA, she also represents CPA as an artist and an athlete. But those that speak of her will first begin by talking about her heart. Please welcome the valedictorian of the class of 2014, Madison Quick. If you had met me when I was three years old, you would have seen a girl in purple seashells and a fishtail. Every day, every day, for a year and a half, I dressed up as the Little Mermaid. I wore the sparkly costume to the grocery store, the mall, the airport, everywhere. I suspect I was not alone in aspiring to be a princess or a superhero or a fire truck. We longed to fill these roles because we saw them as lofty and noble. We wanted to be great. We have upheld this desire for greatness throughout our lives. It is our definition of this greatness that has evolved. For the last four years at Chandler Preparatory Academy, we have been focused on discovering the great. We have read the great books and studied great individuals to form great hearts. We asked the questions, is Odysseus a great man? Why is the Tale of Two Cities a great book? What is greatness? In many ways, today is a celebration of greatness. Greatness of perseverance, greatness of academic achievement, and greatness that we hope to achieve as we step forward today. It is a celebration of great-mindedness, and our class is certainly great-minded. For instance, this year on top of his senior course load, Anisha Nod took an online class in economics and energy. Gabby Rabadon's thesis was 30 pages long. Yanni Laladakis ranked summa cum laude on the National Latin Exam for four years in a row. And did I mention our own Wyatt Shalafu won the eighth grade spelling bee? But even more than this, today is a celebration of great heartedness, and our class is certainly great heart. For instance, Bridget Kiley invited her key club to help unite newly adopted children with their new family. On the senior trip, Prescott Matthews used his extra per diem money to buy food for the homeless and impoverished people on the streets of Washington, D.C. This year, Lori Polly will spend six months traveling to Papua New Guinea to work with doctors and nurses to heal the sick. We have not just studied greatness, we have exemplified it. Before we leave today, I want to look again at some literary and historical figures on whom we bestowed this title of greatness. Characters like Sidney Carton and Alyosha, Telemachus, Abraham Lincoln, and Jesus. As I read off this list, I cannot help but feel I come up a bit short in comparison. I have never sacrificed my life to save the husband of the woman I love. I've never abolished slavery. I've never delivered the Gettysburg Address. And I have definitely never been the Son of God. <laughs> if you two feel a bit inadequate compared to these people, let us together look at closer at these three doers of great things, Alyosha Karamazov, Abraham Lincoln, and Jesus. Like us, these men were not born into greatness. Alyosha, the youngest brother in Dostoyevsky, the brothers Karamazov, was born to a father who abandoned him. Not from any malice or ill will towards Alyosha, he simply forgot about him. Abraham Lincoln was born in a one-room cabin to undistinguished parents undistinguished Kentucky town. And Jesus? He was born in a barn and placed in a feeding trough. Humble beginnings would be an understatement. Even after the birth of these supposedly great people, greatness did not seem a likely destiny. Alyosha was the smartest of the Karabatov brothers, and courageous? 
Forget it. 20 year old Alyosha blushes and hides behind his elder when a girl laughs at him. Lincoln only had one year of formal schooling. He lost eight elections and was a self proclaimed congressman. Jesus' closest friends were fishermen. He dined with prostitutes and tax collectors, the most spurred people in society. None of these three great men had any of the prerequisites for greatness. They were not the most educated or the wealthiest. They did not surround themselves with other great people, and they were not the most for both. But before you write them off, let me remind you of how these men earned the title of greatness. Alyosha was a man who was said to have complete faith in people. He never remembered any offense. It was said that Alyosha loved with an act as soon as he loved, he helped. Most of all, Alyosha forgave without the least expression of contempt or condemnation of anyone at all. Lincoln was a man who walked four miles to return four cents to a man who accidentally overpaid him. Lincoln visited wounded Confederates at the Citibank Hospital, his handshakes just as hearty, his interest just as real as if they were his own soldiers. Lincoln stood up for equality of all in a time when it would have been easier to remain seated. Jesus was a man who washed the feet of his followers. He saved an adulteress from being stoned. He touched and cared for the outcast lepers. These men had none of the prerequisites for greatness, and yet they were undeniably great, for they forgave, they loved, and they served. This is true greatness. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, everybody can be great because anybody can serve. You don't need a college degree to serve. You don't need your subject and verb to agree to serve. You only need a heart full of grace, a soul generated by love. As we step into this next phase of our lives, this is the kind of greatness that I hope we all achieve. It is not an outburst of extreme courage or sudden philanthropy. It is a way of being practice an extraordinary kindness. Each one of us can have a gracious heart and a loving soul. Each one of us can be great. I believe each one of us will be. Class of 2014, now is the time to aspire to extraordinary things. So innovate and invent. Major in art history. Travel the world. Sell all you have and become a sheep farmer. Run faster. Stretch out your arms further, drink in the wild air. But as you do, to the extent that you can, never forget what true greatness is. Have a heart overflowing with unconditional love. Build each other up. Forget all offenses. Give compliments, a lot of them. Assume benevolence in everyone you meet. Choose to serve, choose to forgive, choose to love. Leave people better than you found them, for it is then that we will be truly great.